Hi, this is Don again with that problem from section 8.1. It has to do with the difference in two means, and we solved it last time using Excel to do the manual calculation. This time we're going to do a, a similar problem. It's the same problem, just with slightly different data. We're going to use StatCrunch. So I just click on that, launch StatCrunch, and I want to bring it over here so we can see it. And I can enter the data. Click on stats, Z stats, because this is a normal problem, to sample, and we have summary data. Bring this up a bit. The mean of sample one is 13. Standard deviation is 0.8. N1 is equal to 60. Mean of two is 11 and standard deviation of 1.4, and then n of 40. And again, this is for the difference of two means, and we always set that equal to zero. And our alternative hypothesis is the difference is not equal to zero. So I'm going to click on Compute, and we get these results. We get the standard error the Z stat of 8.1877 and a p-value of less than 0 0.001. So right off, you know, we, it, it, we can look at the p-value and know that it is a significant test and therefore we reject the null. But let's do it uh, looking to see if this standardized statistic falls into the rejection zone, 8.1877. So we're going to go back over here to the problem, and we're given an alpha of 0.05, and you can go into the normal table, standard over table, and pull out the critical Z values, uh, which would, for the two-tailed test, be minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. But they've given it to us, nice little standard normal curve here showing the Z critical values, they call them Z0, of minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. This is a two-tailed test, um, and therefore the rejection zones are less than minus 1.96 or greater than 1.96, the little blue areas. Now, our standardized test statistics rounded to two decimal places is 8.19. Does that fall in the rejection zone? Well, yeah. If you think about it, 8.19 is way over here somewhere. Um, so yes, our standardized test statistic does fall in the rejection region, which means we reject the null hypothesis and that at the 5% level there is enough evidence to reject the claim, which was the null. And that is how we do it with StatCrunch. All right, we're back in my stat lab, and I brought over the standardized test statistic of 9.55 after you rounded the two decimal places. We already had the test statistic, 3, and the question is, is the standardized test statistic in the rejection region? Well, what is the rejection region? Well, they gave us alpha 0.05, and we could go into a standard normal table and pull out the, the z-critical values, which would establish the rejection zone. But they've given it to us in this diagram over here, here our normal curve, and we see that the z-critical goes from minus 1.96 to plus 1.96. And because we've got a two-tailed test, the rejection zone, these blue areas on the two tails. So is 9.55 in that area? Well, yeah, 9.55 is way over here somewhere. So it's definitely in the rejection zone. Should you reject the null hypothesis? Yes. We reject the null, and at 5% level of significance, there is enough evidence 
to reject the claim, which is the null. Okay, on the next video, we'll do this problem using StatCrunch. Be right back.